Hello and welcome to this edition of The Courtroom, a show that is your weekly guide into the courtrooms of the country. On the show this week, government to approach Supreme Court to extend auction timelines, but at least seven cases by telcos on spectrum and auction process still caught in a legal tangle. Cement companies formed a cartel, says CCI, once again in its final order last week. But some cement companies have already moved compact. The judiciary seeking India Inc.'s view on presidential reference is a watershed event, says India's leading legal couple. But before we go deeper into our stories for this week, let's take a quick look at the news from the legal arena. Delhi High Court directs appointment committee of cabinet to form ERA Tribunal within one week. ERA Tribunal is headless since June. Federation of Indian Airlines had approached court against 3.45% tariff hike in Delhi Airport. Bombay High Court provides certainty to taxpayers undertaking group consolidation, says tax fee reorganization not per se colorable device or unfair method for tax reduction. Supreme Court disposed RIL's plea for appointment of arbitrators on KGD-6 dispute. Government has appointed Justice P.N. Kare and RIL has appointed Justice Barucha. The arbitration bench will now appoint the third arbitrator. Even as the Apex Court decides on extension of the auction process timelines, the telecom war is brewing across courtrooms. Telcos are not just challenging the auction process on several factors, but are seeking cancellation of licenses of other players, withdrawal of additional spectrum, or even seeking spectrum to be earmarked. Priyal, who has been tracking these cases across the courtrooms, gives us the status check first. Well, Vivek, there are about dozens of cases that have been a direct fallout of the Supreme Court February 2nd order quashing 122 licenses. But just we'll run you through uh, some of the cases which are connected either to the auction process or uh, to the availability of Spectrum. Now, to begin with, Arcom and Tata Tele have moved TDSAT. They're seeking the additional Spectrum beyond 4.4 uh, megahertz or uh, up to 6. Point megahertz that is due as per the contract to be given to them. Uh, they want either the process of auction to be stayed or this particular spectrum to be uh, the additional spectrum to be earmarked before the auction process. Now, do you, uh, now, notices has been issued to the Department of Telecom by TDSAT as far as these two matters are concerned. But moving on to the story of uh, GSM versus CDMA, CUI, which is the GSM body, has moved Supreme Court. Now, this is with regard to the dual tech licenses seeking the cancellation of dual tech licenses will have a bearing whether the dual tech license holders will be uh, participating in the auction process or not. Uh, now, the hearing of that is... Uh, is going on. Uh, moving on, the other side, which is the CD, CDMA uh, side, uh, the body has moved along with the telecom players against uh, the Department of Telecom and uh, incumbent players, where they say that the uh, that the incumbents have been given additional spectrum beyond 6.2 megahertz in an arbitrary matter, and that spectrum should be withdrawn and put made part of the auction pool now this matter is yet to be admitted uh, however has been listed but yet to be admitted uh, in the court but moving on to the other side of the gsm versus cdma story see coi uh, along with bharti and other uh, airtel and vodafone and idea have moved uh, tdsat seeking that uh, the dot has misinterpreted the supreme court judgment and tata Tele's licenses should be part of the overall licenses that have been cancelled now tdsat has reserved this judgment uh, on the maintainability grounds but the other two important cases that are there are the unitech wireless directly connected to the auction process uh, where they say that given that the government is not auctioning the entire spectrum that will be made available, there's artificial hoarding of spectrum. Of course, this matter again is going to be listed, uh, is going to be admitted. But last but not the least, the telecom watchdog, uh, again in the lines of OSPI, has said that the additional spectrum given to incumbent players uh, has caused a loss to the, to the exchequer. And therefore, on this matter, the notices has been issued to the telecom companies. So this is where all the cases stand at this point in time. Vivek. To understand better what could be the implications of some of these matters on the entire auction process and even the telecom sector, Priyal caught up 
with two legal experts, Asim Abbas, partner at Khedan and & Company, and Balbir Singh from DSK Legal. Uh, well, my first question to you, Asim, is now with regard to the extension of timelines uh, that that has been spoken about. We know that TDSAT already gives uh, uh, you know gives speedier or faster disposal. Do you see many of these cases uh, being addressed uh, before the auction process now? I think TDSAT is very fast these days in terms of disposal of cases, and it is likely that in the next couple of months, some of the important cases which it relates to the auction of 2G spectrum may be disposed of. All right, but as far as the cases are concerned, take us through the legal, uh, you know, sort of uh, standpoints that could be coming in the way, if at all, in the auction process. Well, I think the government has taken most of the decision relating to 2G, 2G auction. Uh, one decision on which there is disagreement is the number of sl slots available for auction. On an average, six slots were cancelled by the Supreme Court in its decision in February. As per the DOT guidelines, two slots are available for auction. So there are missing four slots. Uh, so some of the cases in TDSAT and one case in Supreme Court relates to the number of slots which should be available for auction. Because if the same number of slots are not available, then some of the operators whose licenses have been cancelled may be denied an opportunity to get the spectrum and be an operator in India. There are two other cases which relates to those licenses whose licenses are valid and these licenses were given under old regime but the startup spectrum of 4.4 megahertz which was embedded in the earlier regime is either not given or some additional spectrum is not given. So if there is some decision of TDSAT uh, with respect to a startup spectrum of 4.4 megahertz, which is a contractual arrangement between the licensor and a licensee, it can put a question mark on further availability of the spectrum, whether a priority should be given to those licenses to whom a licenses have been given and they have a valid license, or to those whose licenses have been cancelled. So there could be some uncertainty with respect to that. Well, let me get in Balbir here. Balbir, uh, with the extension, we see the extension of uncertainties. Do you agree with that view? See, when we look at uh, the February order of the court, uh, I think uh, putting together all the cases, even if we see that 122 licenses got cancelled, so which means that uh, uh, more than 400 megahertz of spectrum has been vacated or vacant, uh, which is to be auctioned. When we look at the kind of auction which has been proposed, uh, it is not going to consume the entire spectrum which has been vacated by cancellation of licenses. So I don't see any bearing of these cases being pended in the court, maybe TDSAT or Supreme Court, on the existing auction which is going to come up uh, sometime next month. All right, Balbi, but that brings me to the other question, uh, you know, with regard to a matter which is already before uh, the Supreme Court, challenging the fact that uh, the, the, there is going to be a, perhaps an artificial hoarding of the spectrum, uh, given that the entire spectrum is not being auctioned. Now, that is something that, uh, you know, still has to be addressed. It still has to come before the bench. How do you read that? I really do not see that uh, the current auction is going to have any bearing uh, uh, on the view taken by the court. Now, the only consequence I see is that if the holding issue which is before the Supreme Court is taken up and if that is merged uh, with the earlier order and then they define something afresh, then that may have any issue or concern. Well, what has also sort of emerged out uh, right now with the series of litigation that we are seeing is this you know, war out there between the GSM and CDMA players. I would like to take your uh, views, uh, Asim, first as far as the, you know, the implications uh, with regard to that. Yeah, it's a, it's a war which will probably, should be over after the auction because the spectrum would be technology neutral and the service neutral. So that uh, categorization or distinction may not be there. So on the spectrum, there is a certainty now. There is a certainty in the sense that policy is in place. But the challenge is the existing and the new, in the sense that will there be a two regime or it will be the same regime which will apply to both. Now the DOT issued guidelines in July 2012 where there is already an option given to the existing operator that if they want to migrate to a liberalized spectrum regime, they can give an auction determined price. So on a going forward basis, it will be a clean state, but how to harmonize the new regime with the existing one would be the challenge. 
All right, let me get Balbir in here. Balbir, your thoughts as far as the battle that is ensuing between the GSM and CDMA players? I see a concern on two, three fronts. One is the uh, interpretation which has been made by GSM lobby of this, the decision of the court uh, that the dual technology licenses which were given prior to the cutoff date, those licenses have been cancelled or not because that's the war which is going on. Uh, is going to have an implication because if the uh, Reliance and uh, Tata Tele services, because these were the two prime players uh, where the dual technology license was relevant. Now, if it is treated based on the order of February that those licenses are also can cancelled, these players need to come in front and need to bid for uh, the spectrum in the auction. So that's the point number one, which I think will remain unsorted uh, unless it is clarified before uh, the entire auctioning process by the Supreme Court or TDSAT at some level. Uh, the second issue is uh, what is going to happen, the excess spectrum which was given to the uh, GSM players, which was beyond 4.4 or 6.2 megahertz, uh, how will be charged, uh, whether that is to be returned back or not. That's the second issue which uh, will remain unsolved. And the third issue uh, which I see will remain unsolved is uh, uh, the decision to be taken by the government, whether the incumbent license holders where the spectrum is still available with them and they have a couple of more years uh, where the validity of license is not a problem for them. Whether the government is going to charge some additional fee from these incumbent uh, uh, license holders, whether you may call it as a one-time fee or a revenue sharing mechanism in those cases. So I think these prime three issues will remain uh, unclear or unsorted uh, even after the auctioning process, unless these are clarified or settled by some court or some regulatory authority. And do you see more telcos coming in? Uh, perhaps challenging the very uh, pricing of the auction given that some have raised concerns uh, with regard to the high pricing? Uh, I certainly see, uh, uh, because the level I see or the stage I see is once the IM is out, information memorandum is out, which means which is going to uh, give the clear picture the basis on, uh, on the basis of which the, uh, the telecom players are going to bid and some clarification is sought and I am pretty clear that the telecos will ask what is the basis of this 14,000. So that may be a, a, a one area where even the litigation may go on uh, even prior to auction, maybe in TDSAT or maybe Supreme Court. Okay, Asim, let me get your thoughts in. Uh, as far as on the observation that the reserve price can be challenged in the TDSAT, uh, I think it's highly unlikely because that's a policy decision and TDSAT generally don't interfere in the policy decision. Uh, with respect to the reserve price of 40,000 crore. All right, we take a quick break on that note, but we will tell you how cement companies are getting started for another battle to defend themselves against the CCI order. Coming up after the short break.